this is Hammer Striker here. We're going to talk to you today about the Bond Arms Derringer style pistols. This particular one is their Snake Slayer 4. There is also the original Snake Slayer. The Snake Slayer 4 has a 4 and a quarter inch barrel. The original Snake Slayer has a 3 inch barrel. And there's a few unique things about the Bond Arms series of, of pistols. There's two different basic frame sizes with a, a longer grip like the Snake Slayer and then they've got s several with a slightly shorter grip and they've got about 12 different models 20 different barrels that you can interchange and about 25 different caliber combinations any Bond Arms barrel will fit on any Bond Arms frame the, the frame is the actual firearm this is what you purchase from, through an FFL the barrels you can order directly from Bond Arms and they mail them right to you so with this platform you have a large choice of calibers, lengths, styles, they have some matte finish barrels, uh, this one is a stainless steel barrel. It's a very well built solid pistol and it has a number of safety features. So first thing we'll start with is demonstrating that this one is unloaded. It is a two shot Derringer style, you pull down this little lever, the barrel pops swing the barrel back and you're able to load it. The Snake Slayer with right from the factory the model Snake Slayer comes with a 410 45 long colt barrel. You also have, can get a 45 ACP barrel like this one which I'll show you a little bit later in the video how to put that on. They've got 22 they've even got a 10 millimeter barrel for this platform. The firing mechanism on this, it has a rebounding locking hammer. So when you pull the hammer back and then you fire, it hits the firing pin and then rebounds back and locks in a position back off of the firing pin. So that if you drop it and hit the hammer, it's not going to fire. It has a bolt safety. So right now it's in the fire position. It may be a little bit difficult to tell. Oh, I'm sorry, there it's in the fire position. Right here, there's a little red indicator that it's in the fire position and in the safe position. So you've got the cross bolt safety, you've got the rebounding hammer. It automatically switches barrels. Every time you cycle the hammer and fire it, there's a piston or a reciprocating mechanism inside that moves it to the other barrel. So you don't have to worry about setting selector switches, remembering to move it from the barrel you just fired. You fire it, the next time you cycle it, it's going to fire the other barrel. So that makes it very easy to operate. They've got numerous grips available. The Snake Slayer comes with this nice wood grip. It's actually a wood grip with the Snake Slayer logo and kind of a snake's thin stippling pattern. It's kind of fitting in with the whole Snake Slayer concept. So let me go ahead and it also comes with a nice hard case. When you purchase a barrel, the barrel will come with the necessary wrench to remove the barrel. The concept behind this is it's a very small, it weighs about 23 and an eighth ounce in this configuration. Obviously the weight will vary depending on which frame you purchase and which barrel you happen to have installed at the moment. A couple other things that you may have seen people that had earlier models that complained about the trigger. The trigger on this is an upgraded version as well as the hammer. It's got a lot wider blade on it. It's one of the ways you can tell. But all of the newer models since I think it's around 2012 have the upgraded hammer and upgraded trigger. And the difference was on the old ones you had to pull the trigger back and down which is kind of an unnatural movement. The upgraded versions which they all come with now it's a pull back just like any other trigger you're used to. The other thing is varying models have trigger guards or don't have trigger guards and the trigger guard on this is removable. There's a bolt you undo there, drop the trigger guard out and pull it off. So you have the option of having the trigger guard or not having the trigger guard depending on what you want to do. Okay, let me show you how easy it is to change out the barrel from whatever barrel's on it at the moment to any of the other barrels that you may choose. They've got a little lever here that's spring-loaded and you just pull down on this lever and you'll notice the barrel pops up a little bit. So that's spring-loaded as well, meaning you don't have to have one hand on the barrel as you pull this and try to do it. It'll spring up and release for you. And as I let go of the lever, it'll go back into place and the barrel is now unlocked. 
So all you do is unlock the barrel, obviously confirm it's empty, and set it down with the barrel in any real position just loose of the locking mechanism. They provide a wrench for removing the barrel. It's a hex wrench. Simply place it in and unscrew the bolt that holds the barrel in place. It also acts as the pivot. And this part is very well designed. The bolt guides into the barrel and frame before it hits the threads. So it's very easy to put this together without cross-threading. You almost have to deliberately try to cross-thread it. I'll show you when I put it to the next barrel on. You drop it in, it guides in place, and then you thread it down. Once you've pulled that bolt out, the barrel comes free. Now you can see that this is a barrel for a rimmed cartridge, the 41045 long colt. So it has a little ejector you can push on to help get the cartridges free. This is a 45 ACP barrel, and this is one of the shorter 45 ACP barrels. Now because this is a rimless cartridge, it doesn't have the ejector. The cartridge will just properly find it for you. Here's a 45 uh, ACP snap cap. It drops in, and to eject it, you just take your, your thumb or anything like that and pull it free. Of course, this snap cap doesn't exactly match the specs. If this were an actual 45, when you have an actual 45, it would slide in there much easier. An actual valid cartridge goes in very easy. So you can see, it just drops right in and pops right out. It's, of course, easier to do it when you're not trying to do it on camera. The other thing you can do is you can take like a little wooden, if you, get, if you happen to get one that gets stuck, you can take a, a wooden dowel, a pick, or something like that, and push it out that way as well. It's very rare that they actually give you any difficulty. It's a little bit more difficult, of course, without having the extractor on the rimless cartridges. So let's go ahead and put this barrel back on. To put the barrel back on, you line up the little notch, you just slide it in there. Then I usually eyeball it to make sure it's somewhat lined up, but the pin actually has a little bit of a bevel on the front of it, which will help guide it. So I just drop the pin in, kind of wiggle the barrel as I push the pin in. And of course normally when I'm not doing this on camera, it just drops right in without any difficulty. Push the pin down through the barrel, and now at this point it's into the guide on the other side. At that point, let's take your wrench, and it should very easily, you notice I'm just kind of doing this with the edge of two fingers, it should thread in very easily. If you're finding to put any force on it, you've probably got it not quite right, back off and stop. Once you get it all the way in, you just kind of give it a little push like this. You're not trying to tighten it down for life, you just want to make it snug. It's not part of any kind of recoil or cycling mechanism. Lock it down and you're ready to go. Now a few of the characteristics of this, it has a notch rear sight that is integrated into it. It's part of, of the gun right here. And the barrel has a built-in ramp sight that's optimized for whatever round that barrel and length it's set for. None of the sights are interchangeable or removable. And they're, they're fairly easy to see if I can get this into a position. You can see you just, you're basically lining up the, the rear notch with the ramp. Now it's important to note, though a little gun like this is, can be very accurate, these aren't designed to be 200 yard you know, marksman guns. These are up close and personal type you know, self-defense or fun target. So these sights are more than adequate for the intended purpose. I'm going to go ahead and show you the trigger operation and I'm going to use snap caps. These are 45 snap caps because they do not recommend dry fire on any of their barrels, especially not in their 22, you know, the rimfire barrels they offer, but they don't recommend uh, doing any dry fire at all. So I'm going to put snap caps in. To fire it, you know, put it on fire, pull the hammer back until it locks, and the trigger is actually fairly easy to pull. Let me get my finger out of the way. You just pull it straight back. It's very short travel. Uh, almost no take up. It's, it's on the sear right now from the moment I put my finger on it. 
move it back roughly an eighth of an inch and it fires. Now as I keep doing this it's alternating between barrels automatically for me. And when you're done you want to eject you pull it back, flip it up, eject your cartridges. Now I'm going to have to use the pick to eject these because of the snap caps and they're slightly out of spec. But if I were doing this with regular 45 they probably would eject fairly easily on their own. snap caps aren't up to the standards of regular ammunition. So the next thing that would come into mind is holsters. Bond Arms has a whole series of holsters that are available for this particular gun. Additionally, you can use things like this DeSantis pocket holster and it'll fit right into that. You can also use like the Remora sleeve holsters these pocket holsters, not only can they be used as a pocket holster, but most of them have this grippy texture on them, so they can also be used as an inside the waistband holster. They'll pinch between the body and the belt. The grippy texture will hold it in place, and you can pull the, pull the gun. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about the, the purpose of a gun like this. Uh, one of the features of this gun is it's relatively compact, and it's relatively light, you know, 23 and, a, and an eighth ounces. Uh, actually even lighter with this configuration with the shorter barrel on it. And that's one of the big things that you can do with this platform with the multiple barrels and the two different basic grip sizes. You've got the flexibility of customizing this to your current needs or whatever need you've got at the moment. Some of the other things that you know might be considered for carry purposes might be something like this Beretta 96 which is a 40 cal which is unloaded. Go ahead and close this one. And you can see that not only is the Bond Arms, even if I had the Snake Slayer barrel on it, significantly smaller than this, it's also drastically lighter than this particular weapon. And you know, with this one here, you're going to get 12 plus 1. This one here, you're going to get 2. But it's that age-old compromise between compactness and size and capacity. With this being a 40, you can get a 40 barrel for this. The other side of the spectrum would be something like this CAR P380, which is a very high quality 380, and is actually smaller and lighter than the Bond Arms. But you've got the 380 cartridge, which there are, there are a number of people that feel the 380 cartridge is inadequate for defense. In the space that you can get six plus one 380s in this, you can have two 45s, 410s, or whatever it is that that you want to have. And then there's kind of that middle middle area, something like this XDM 3.8, which is in 9mm. They're roughly equal in weight, but you can see that the Bond Arms is, is significantly smaller grip as well as length. So this gives you a number of different options in how you might carry this, conceal it, it could even be used as a backup weapon. This might be a boot gun, an ankle gun, or you know, another gun that you keep someplace else to back up a primary weapon. With the multiple different barrel combinations, you also buy one registered firearm. You go through an FFL, you buy the frame. Once you've bought the frame, you can buy different barrels and bit different uh, caliber combinations directly from Bond Arms. They're between $100 and $200 depending on the finish, the length, and the caliber you choose. And interchange them as you see fit. So with a collection of barrels you can very easily, as you saw, customize this to meet whatever it is you need to do at the given moment. When you get into something like you know this barrel and snakes and varmints, and obviously when we go out we want to leave them, the wildlife alone and not kill anything we don't have to. But every once in a while the wildlife might decide that it has different ideas. And if I'm going to have to deal with a venomous snake, you know, down here we've got moccasins and rattlesnakes, I'd much rather deal with it with something like this 410 shot shell than try to hit it with something like this, you know, small and fast moving coming at you and I got one one projectile and I've got to make my hit, or these CCI shot shells are popular for pistols. This happens to be the 45, 
they make these in a couple different calibers, but from what I've read, the only one that's truly effective and reliable is the 45. And you can see that you've got a significant difference in the capacity and the power between the 45 CCI and the 410. So, when, you know, I'm unlikely to get in a protracted gun battle with a venomous snake if I can't take care of it with two. You know, that's going to be very unlikely. This, as you, as this fire, this it comes out to a decent, you know, kind of a effective area, and at the distance that you would be likely to engage that or you know a rabid animal like a raccoon or something coming after you, at the distance you'd be likely to engage something like that. This is going to be highly effective. So a gun like this kind of gives you all of these different calibers and many, many more with one frame. Just to interchange the barrels. One thing I will note, all of their barrels are same caliber. So whatever you choose, the top and bottom barrel will be the same caliber. Some of the barrels are combo in that, for example, the, the 45 long cold barrel also chambers 410, but both barrels will chamber either. And you can even do a combination of both. So I could put a 410 in the top barrel and a 45 long cold in the bottom barrel. They don't offer any of the kind of the hybrids of a you know, 9 millimeter in one barrel and a 410 in the top barrel. They're all consistent across the platform. And like I mentioned, they've even got a 10 millimeter for this little, little platform. So overall, what you've got is a very flexible, very useful you know, concealed carry slash you know, varmint defense. And it's actually even a lot of fun to shoot at the range, even with the power of the 410. It's very manageable recoil, as you'll see in our videos, in our range footage that'll follow. So if you like our video, please share, subscribe, and give us a thumbs up. Thank you. One thing you're doing is pull and pull down. Okay, when you pull it, so you just you want to squeeze, and I mean, don't be afraid to let it come up like this after you squeeze. 